What's up friends? Welcome back to another video. Today I have my middle grade reading vlog. Today is August 29th and I'm just gonna go through the books really quickly because I don't want the intro to be too long because I am gonna be reading three books in this video. My current read is Pella Santiago and the River of Tears by Taylor K. Mejia for the We Love Middle Grade Book Club hosted by Alessandra and Andrea and I will have their links down below. I'm liking this so far. It's really good. The live discussion is tomorrow at 8 p.m. So at least I have some time today and tomorrow. I started it last night and it's pretty quick. Um, it is a middle grade. It's 350 pages. There's so many important topics so far. Bigotry, racism, and there is also a trigger warning for drowning because there's a little girl who drowns and they're kind of just trying to figure out what happened to her? Pala's friend Emma goes missing and they're trying to find out where she went. She was supposed to meet her and her friend Dante at a river that they're forbidden to go to and they were going to go stargazing with the new telescope that Pella has. So now the mystery starts and they're trying to find out what happened to Emma and find her. Um, so I'm excited to get back into it. I love middle grade because the characters are so pure. Pella likes science and she wants to be a scientist and I just love that. She just loves science and she's always spitting out facts and it's just so cool. I love it. So my plan is to continue reading this today. The next one is Goldie Vance and the Hotel Who Done It by Lilam Rivera and this I'm going to be reading for Monsterathon which starts on September 1st. It's for the whole month of September and I'll be reading this for the challenge to read a book with mystery in it and I thought that this was a graphic novel at first and then I flipped through and it's it's not really. It has more text than pictures, but it does have some mini comics in it. So I am excited to get to this. I'm gonna start this on September 1st. And the last book is Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega. This is written by a Latinx non-binary author. If you're new to my channel, I really like books that tackle grief. And I don't think I've read many books that are middle grade that tackle grief. In Dominican heritage and folklore, it is believed that fireflies represent the souls of lost loved ones and that sold me and so I am very excited to read this one as well. It's almost one o'clock so I am going to continue reading this and I will give you an update once I am halfway in. Cold sweat, I was in a nightmare searching in the dark but I couldn't find you. There were footsteps coming down the hallway but when I turned around it wasn't you. I was looking at myself, I couldn't see my face, but deep down I knew it was true. Shadows handed me a question, if I ever lost you, what would I do? What would I do? do, -do, -do, -do. What would I do? From my premonition, I couldn't feel your warmth, I couldn't find you. So I flipped out, I ran into the kitchen, I found a little note. It's Sunday, it is after four o'clock, and I have hit the 200 page mark of Pella Santiago and the River of Tears. And I just want to update a little bit because the live is at eight o'clock. So I want to finish it before then. Um, just welcome to my life where I procrastinate. But I'm also just a really slow reader. Um, there was hockey on last night and I just have been finding it really hard to read. There are so many things going on in the world and it is just so hard for me to just concentrate on a book because I'm just constantly thinking about everything that's going on. Um, the pandemic, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, just so many things are going on and it's just so hard for me to even concentrate concentrate on reading um especially a book where it's magic and i have to concentrate to understand the world building this is magical realism and it is set in mexico and just this is just so good i'm really enjoying it um but at the same time it's really hard for me to concentrate on reading but as for the book I'm really enjoying it. I love middle grade and this is tackling really hard topics and I talked about that in the last clip but 
there is a underlying message of kidnapping and ice and deportation and that is done so well and I just wanted to cry just thinking about all of the kids being kidnapped and I really like that that is a message in here and the magical elements are so fun. Our main character Pala, she is just so snarky and I just love her. Um, I just love middle grade because it just makes me really happy and I just love the kids and it is just fun to read. I like all of the magical elements and yeah. It's fun. Pella has a friend Dante who is like her sidekick and I love that she talks all about feminism and she's having like a little crush on him. Um, they're around 12 years old and it's set during the summer and it's her just understanding her feelings. They line um, in the last chapter and she says, it took everything in Pal not to go on a rant about how girls shouldn't have to be responsible for boys inability to control their stupid savior complexes. But this was life and death and she had more to worry about than Dante's scattered focus. And she's just great. I really enjoy her and this is actually going to be I think a trilogy, but I do know that there's like a sequel coming out. The author posted on her Instagram that this is actually being optioned for a TV series and that would be amazing. Like that would just look so cool. So I'm really hoping that they go forth with that and it happens. Those are just my thoughts for right now. There are so many important topics in this and I am really enjoying it. Stories like this make me so happy because kids get stories like this and I never got things like that growing up. So it just makes me so happy that kids now get stories like this. This. So those are my thoughts for right now. I'm gonna finish up the book. I'll come back and then I have the live discussion that I'm going to be joining. So I'm very excited. I'm gonna finish this and I will return later. So it's 11 o'clock and I just want to wrap up this book. I did end up finishing it before the live discussion and I had such a fun time. I just loved hearing everyone's experiences, especially because this is not a book that is for me. So I loved hearing how everyone could relate to it um, and I just really loved it. Um, I was hesitant and I wanted to give it a 3.75 but I ended up giving it a 4 because just listening to what everyone else said I understood more of what my complaints were. Um, I am not one to read magic books so it was hard for me to actually get into the world but as everyone was talking about the world I understood it more. This is why I love book clubs because I just love getting to hear everyone else's experience and it definitely helps just shape my own opinion and I really enjoyed it. Um, it just tackled so many topics that I was really glad it did. Um, there is so much about deportation and kids being kidnapped and colorism and how some kids get the justice and get found and some don't and there was just so many underlying messages about kidnapping and it was just fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I'm excited for the sequel um, and this was just great. I really enjoyed it. I just love middle grade and I love just that the middle grade that we're getting now tackles heavy topics and I'm just so glad that kids have these books because I did not have these when I was growing up and so I did give it a four star and I will link some own voices reviews down below just talking more about it. I enjoyed it and I would recommend it um, especially if you like magical worlds. Um, there is just so much in this that is really important and I really like the way that the author wrote it. I have not read her previous work but I would like to maybe on audio just because reading magic physically it's just hard for me to process so I feel like if I heard it it would be a little bit easier. When I go into middle grade the one thing that I look for is if the main character is actually depicted as a kid because it is really hard to write kids and the author did such a good job. The kids are really blunt and forgiving and that's just what I love about kids and I feel like that was the perfect way to depict a kid um, and Pella and her friend Dante have some feelings for each other other and I really enjoyed that because as you're a kid growing up especially in middle school this is definitely a thing that's going to happen and you're curious about it. The way that the author wrote a child was so good and I'm just so excited for kids to actually read this. I really enjoyed it. I loved the 
themes that were in it. I want to just get myself acquainted with more genres that aren't contemporary and I just always wish that I could be the type of person that reads magical realism in books or fantasy books and I just wish I could. I'm going to try my best and it sucks because I just want to do it but my brain just doesn't process it and I just have a harder time understanding because the world building is just so new to me. Um, but I'm just gonna try my best because I just want to be able to read them um, because I don't want to always just read contemporary. So my first step is going to see if I do better just listening to these stories instead of physically reading them because world building is really hard for my brain to process. So hopefully that'll work out for me, but I do just want to step out of my comfort zone. So I'm hoping that it works but we'll see. Um, but I did really enjoy this. This is obviously spoiler free and so are the reviews that I linked down below, but I really enjoyed it. I do recommend this, um, but do read the own voices reviews because they matter way more than my opinion does. Um, but today is August 30th and so I'm not going to start reading my next book until September 1st, so I will come back on September 1st to start my next book. <laughs> Hello, it is September 3rd and I'm here to update you about my reading. I am going to start my second book today, my first read for Monsterathon. This tackles the challenge Secret Crept to read a book with a mystery element or just a mystery book. And so I'm going to be reading Goldie Vance, The Hotel Who Done It by Lila Rivera. This is a Latinx retelling of Nancy Drew and I'm excited. This is 254 pages. I have a feeling I'll be able to fly through this. So I'm gonna go read and I will see you later. So this would only happen to me but I am six pages in and Goldie Vance tells us that she is 16 years old. So is this a middle grade? I don't know. I kind of feel like it's not um, because she was talking about how she can drive and I was like that's weird why can a kid drive and then she just said now that I'm 16, I get to work here too. She said, the Cross Palms Resort has been my home ever since dad got a job working here 10 years ago. Now that I'm 16, I get to work here too. Um, so maybe I changed the title of this video to two middle grades and a YA. Um, I don't know if this is still considered a middle grade. I'm gonna look that up, um, but I thought it was a middle grade who knows? I also thought it was a graphic novel. This book is really misleading, <laughs> um, but I am enjoying it. Um, I've never actually read Nancy Drew, so I'm wondering if it is like related. Um, I have no idea. All I know is that she works at this hotel and she wants to be a detective and I've never met a 16 year old that wanted to be a detective. Cool. Um, I'm excited to read more of the mystery, but the writing does feel juvenile, um, so maybe this is still considered a middle grade. I don't know. I'm gonna look it up. So the real mystery of this book is what the audience is. Um, I checked Goodreads. I checked the publisher's website. It says children's and juvenile fiction, and Goodreads says it's middle grade or YA, so... I'm just gonna say it's middle grade or YA and get back to the book. Welcome to the life of a slow reader. I am 76 pages into Goldie Vance and I think it's just taking me out of the story because I 
just keep getting fixated on her age. I did some research to get familiar with the book and like the story. Goldie Vance is a biracial queer detective. I think this is just the type of book where I shouldn't be a critical reader going into it because it is clearly a children's book. Goldie is supposed to be 16 and she reads just like a child and so I'm wondering if it is written like that for that demographic. On the book's Amazon page it says that the reading level is 8 to 12 years old so I imagine that that's why it is written just for children and maybe the fact that she is 16 really has nothing to do with the writing um but that is still kind of pulling me out of the story because it says she's 16 and then she acts kind of like a kid and she's following around this detective and it just is weird because she feels like a kid but she's not because she's 16 it's weird um but I'm trying to move past that another small issue I have is that I'm 76 pages in and there's no mystery yet the book is still setting up for the mystery so I think that's also taking me out of the story because I just want the mystery already so I'm hoping that once I get to 100 pages it will happen and I have read on the back it says that there is a diamond encrusted swim cap that goes missing um and so it is all about Hollywood and I'm enjoying that that's all I'm really getting out of it right now. I'm hoping that I end up enjoying it by the end. It only has 31 reviews on Goodreads, so Goodreads isn't really helping me either. Um, but I think that those two points that I made are just why I'm not connected to the story. But I can also acknowledge that this book clearly is not for me. I am not a kid. Um, and so I think that children would appreciate this and it is definitely like written for children. So I'm hoping to finish this up today and I will update you when I have my final thoughts. For a book that markets itself as a mystery that was the longest build up ever, there is 108 pages left but I am upset that it took that long to get to the mystery. Uh, so I'm going to finish this up and then I will update you on my final thoughts. <music> friends it's Saturday. Last night I finished Goldie Vance The Hotel Who Done It and I'm giving it a 3.5 stars. I thought that it was really slow in the beginning. Like I said previously the mystery didn't come into play until 147 pages and I just felt like that was super slow build up. Um, but in the end the end was really fast paced and fun to read. I liked how the end wrapped up. I was worried that it wasn't going to happen how I imagined it um, but it actually Actually did and so I'm not gonna spoil that for anyone that is looking to read this. I think the mystery was written really well. I liked how the mystery was written because it wasn't just really easy to solve like you know exactly who it was because at one point I was like oh this is definitely who it is and this book proved me wrong because it was not who I thought it was. So overall the book is about Goldie Vance a biracial queer detective. She is 16 years old which still kind of threw me for a loop because the characters kept calling her a kid and I was just so confused because I just don't know if I would classify a 16 year old as a kid. I understand that 16 year olds usually adults don't see them as a teen or that they can make choices um but I was just confused why they kept treating her like a child um so I kind of wished that that didn't happen but I kind of want to know why. I don't know if that's just my own interpretation but I did see some reviews saying that they had the same problem. I'm just confused. I really wish that she just would have acted a little bit older but I do understand that this is for 7 to 12 year olds so I'm wondering if that's why. Like I said before I wonder if it's just the way that she wrote it was for kids to grasp and so they kind of connect to the character. She has a crush on a girl named Diane who works at the record shop and I just loved that. I just love 
like just having a crush even if nothing happened from it many times the romance just wraps up at the end there's insta love or a slow burn romance and i just enjoyed that she was crushing on a girl because i think that is so rare to just have a character crushing and have it not go anywhere that is such a reality for so many people myself included sometimes you just have a crush and nothing happens from it and i feel like that is such a relatable aspect to have added but i really enjoyed that I also really enjoyed the comics because you'll be reading the book text and then there'll just be some comic strips and so I really enjoyed that but I'm wondering why she decided to add certain parts as a comic because I really enjoyed that because it was hard for me to imagine the characters and then I was able to see them in the comic. I really enjoyed that part um but it is about a mystery. There's a famous celebrity who comes to the hotel that Goldie and her father work at and live at. This really inspired me to write a book set in a hotel like Sweet Life of Zack and Cody vibes so maybe that'll be a work in progress someday um but I really enjoyed that premise. So the whole mystery is that a famous celebrity comes to the hotel that Goldie and her father work at and live at to film a movie about mermaids. A diamond encrusted swim cap goes missing and that is a crucial part of the production and so Goldie is trying to find out who done it. I think the author did a great job with the Hollywood aspect and she talks all about feminism and how women are objectified in Hollywood and it was so perfect because the director was a man and he was just always like barking orders at her and he was creepy. I just really enjoyed that because Goldie is like oh well she should be able to do whatever film she wants. She, she should be able to do any role she wants and it was just such a great message. I really really enjoyed that. So those are my final thoughts about Goldie Vance. I am giving it a 3.5 star. This is a novelization of the comic um, which I've never heard of before so I thought that was pretty cool and that is my final wrap up on Goldie Vance. So my next and final read for this reading vlog is Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega. I am so excited to read this. I've been looking all over for a certain bookmark I have. I have a ghost bookmark and that would be perfect to use but the last time I had it was in Cemetery Boys and now it's just vanished so I have no idea where it is. Um, so I'm hoping to find it. If I can't it's fine but I would like to have it. So I am going to start this today and I will update when I have read more of the book. Hello everyone. It is the 19th of September and I just checked that the last time I updated was the 5th. But I wanted to update because I'm on page 116 of Ghost Squad and I found my ghost bookmark. So happy that I found it. Very happy about that. Um, I just wanted to update a little bit and just talk about why I have not updated the vlog, why I have not finished reading this book. It's like 230 pages. I should have finished it already, but I just haven't had the motivation, basically. That's it. I just don't have the motivation for anything <laughs> at all. Um, I've just been going through it and I just don't have the motivation for anything. Um, and reading is that thing, which sucks. Um, I just haven't had the motivation to pick up a book and that's, that's it. Um, and also my laptop has still not come. It's supposed to come next Friday, which is the 25th, which means I will have waited a month, which is a whole different thing, but I'm hoping that my laptop finally gets back to me. So I'm hoping that the next clip is me finishing the book, but I just wanted to update really quick. I don't really have any overall thoughts except that it's cute. I like it. Um, I like where the book is heading, but I don't really have any other thoughts right now. I've been picking it up periodically, but picking it up and reading like a couple pages and that's not even the book. It's just me. Um, so I don't really have any overall thoughts except that I like it. I don't know what I would rate it. I don't even know if I'm going to rate it anything, but I'm excited to see what happens. I really love the main character, Lucille, and her friend Sid. It is just so great and 
just this very perfect for Halloween. Um, so I'm really getting the vibes that I need out of this, but also really enjoying the underlying messages, um, especially of like poverty and grief and just losing loved ones. I'm enjoying the majority of the book. I really don't have any complaints right now, uh, but I am just trying to get back into the book because I've just been picking it up periodically and just reading a couple pages or maybe a chapter and putting it down for a couple of days. So I'm not getting really invested in the book, but that's totally my fault and not the book's fault at all. So I just wanted to update a little bit, just talk about where I've been, why this vlog, I mean, for you, it's it's nothing, um, but for me, it's been a long time. I'm hoping to finish this by tomorrow, so the next clip will be me wrapping up the vlog and talking more about my final thoughts on Ghost Squad. <laughs> This book f broke me. This book f broke me. <laughs> today was not the day, but I'm very glad that I finished that. But today was not the day for that. Oh. I'm just gonna sit here and cry for a while, probably. <laughs> this was beautiful. <sighs> Yikes. Oh my god. Hello everyone, it is September 24th and I have finally finished my reading vlog. My laptop came today, which is so exciting. I'm very happy to have it back because now I can edit this and talk about Ghost Squad. I am giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I thought it was incredible. It was, it was amazing and I cried for probably a solid 20 minutes after. The ending just broke something in me and I cried for a solid 20 minutes and then so forth after I kept thinking about it and started crying. Um, so this is definitely one of my favorite books of the year. What a good middle grade this is. I'm going to link down below to RC's reading vlog and he talks all about it and I really loved how he talked about it and he just talked about the organization and he's an own voices reviewer so please take his word. Um, but I absolutely loved this. If you like the Goonies you're definitely going to like this. It is perfect for October because it's set during Halloween it has witches and it is just incredible. I really enjoyed it. I would have given it the full five but there were so many Harry Potter references especially towards the end that I was just so aggravated by the time that another one came up that I just couldn't give it a solid five but it was incredible. I really enjoyed it and it made me cry like a baby. Um, so let me get all of the books. Now for just a quick wrap up, I read Paola Santiago and the River of Tears by Taylor K. Mejia and I gave this a four star. Goldie Vance and the Hotel Who Done It by Lilium Rivera, 3.5 stars. And Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega, I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Very good middle grades, highly recommend all of these. Um, they're all great for Latinx Heritage Month. So that is it for my middle grade reading vlog. I'll have links down below to Own Voices reviews and to the books so that you can purchase them and support these Latinx authors. Um, if you would like to see me do another middle grade reading vlog, let me know and maybe let me know what books you would like to see me read. That's it for me today. I have a Patreon if you would like to support me there. The next video I'm going to film is actually going to be in exclusive video that goes up this month on Patreon and that is reading my childhood books and I'm going to be reading Loser by Jerry Spinelli and doing some fun nostalgic things in that video. So it's only a dollar if you would like to become a paperback pal but I understand if you can't because we're in a global pandemic. 
thank you all for watching. I hope you're having a great day and staying safe and I will see you next time.